Good morning. Our project is on the maximum size of a family of pairwise graph different permutations. This is Louis, I'm Richard. So the motivation for our project stems from an idea in information theory known as zero error communication. To illustrate what this is, let's say that I'm trying to send a handwritten message to someone using only five letters. In this case, we'll use G, I, J, P, and Q as examples. Now, because the message is handwritten, it's possible that certain pairs of letters, when written down next to each other, are difficult to tell apart. To represent this idea, we construct what is called a distinguishability graph, where vertices of the distinguishability graph represent individual letters, and edges connect pairs of letters that are always distinguishable from each other. So a central question in information theory regarding this situation is, loosely speaking, to ask, what is the maximum rate at which information can be transmitted using this handwriting system such that no errors occur? Now, in order to provide a more precise formulation for this question, we first define a symbol to be an arbitrary string of characters. We then say that two symbols are distinguishable if at some position they contain distinguishable characters. So for instance, the two symbols shown here on the left-hand side of the screen, JPPI and GGQI, are distinguishable because the second letter of the first symbol, P, and the second letter of the second symbol, G, are distinguishable. That is, they're connected in the distinguishability graph. On the other hand, the two symbols shown on the right-hand side of the screen are not distinguishable because at no position do they contain distinguishable characters. So the question then becomes, what is the maximum number of pairwise distinguishable symbols of any given length? So for instance, if we consider symbols of length one, we can have at most two symbols such that any two are distinguishable. On the other hand, if we allow for symbols of length two, we can have up to five symbols. So in our project, we actually investigate uh, a well-studied variation of this problem, where instead of considering symbols, which are just arbitrary strings of characters represented by the vertices of a distinguishability graph, we consider only permutations of the vertices of the distinguishability graph. Then, for any graph G, we let two permutations, denoted by sigma and pi, of the vertices of G to be G different if there exists some position i for which the ith element of pi and the ith element of sigma form an edge in G. So to illustrate what we mean by this, let's consider P4, or the four vertex path, where vertices are labeled one through four, and edges connect pairs of consecutive integers. Then, the two permutations of the vertices of P4 shown here are P4 different, because the second element of the first permutation, one, and the second element of the second permutation, two, are, P are distinguishable, or they are connected in the graph P4. On the other hand, the two permutations of the vertices of P4, shown on the right-hand side of the screen, are not P4 different because at no position are the corresponding elements in each permutation connected in the graph P4. So analogously to how earlier when we were considering sets of pairwise distinguishable symbols, we now shift our attention to families of pairwise graph different permutations. So to introduce a little bit of notation, for any graph G with n vertices, we let f of G denote the maximum size of a family of pairwise graph different, G different permutations of the vertices of G. So for instance, if we again consider P4, or the four vertex graph, you'll see on the screen we've constructed a family of six permutations of the vertices of P4 with the property that any two are P4 different. Now, what this construction shows is that f of P4 is at least six. We can then combine this with a result by Corner and Malvenuto, who showed that f of P4 is at most six to show that f of P4 is equal to six. Now, this result by Corner and Malvenuto is actually a special case of a more general theorem that's of theirs that states that if you have an n vertex bipartite graph G, with a vertices on one side and n minus a vertices on the other side, then f of g is at most n choose a. And specifically, if g is balanced, then n, f of g is at most n choose the floor of n over two. So currently, it is known that equality holds for complete bipartite graphs, but it was conjectured by the same authors that this bound is also tight for the n vertex path. Now, this is a very interesting conjecture because the path in complete bipartite graphs represent sort of extremes in bipartite graph edge density. What we mean by this is that the path has the fewest number of edges among all connected bipartite graphs, whereas the complete bipartite graph has the most. And yet, they are conjectured to have the same maximal pairwise graph different permutation family size. In other words, f is conjectured to yield the same value for both of these graphs. So this leads us to ask, what happens in the intermediate cases for graphs with more edges in the path but fewer than the complete bipartite graph? In order to investigate f, for these bipartite graphs of intermediate density, we define f of n a delta to be the minimum value of f of g over all n vertex bipartite graphs g with a vertices on one side and n minus a vertices on the other side, such that the maximum degree of the bipartite complement of g is delta. And from this definition, we prove a few results, one of which, we sh one of which we've shown here. The intuitive idea behind this theorem 
is that for dense enough balanced by part that graphs g, f of g grows on the exponential order of 2 to the n. And when we say dense enough, we specifically mean that the maximum degree of the bipartic complement of g grows as little o of n, or the minimum degree grows as n over 2 minus little o of n. So because f of the complete balanced bipartite graph, which is equal to n choose the floor of n over 2, also grows on the exponential order of 2 to the n, or n choose the floor of n over 2 also satisfies this equation, it follows that f of n floor of n over 2 little o of n grows in the same exponential order as f of the complete balanced bipartite graph. So this result is important because it presents an extremely large class of balanced bipartite graphs for which f grows on the exponential order of 2 to the n. However, these graphs are still relatively dense as the maximum degrees of their bipartite complements are little o of n. So we now present a much more sparse but specific class of bipartite graphs for which this same growth holds for the function f. And we let these graphs be g of k of n, which we define to be the n vertex balanced bipartite graph consisting of the union of n over 2 of k of n disjoint bounds complete by partite subgraphs. So to illustrate this definition, here we've shown uh, g of k of n for n equal to 18 nodes and k of n equal to three disjoint subgraphs. So from this definition, we show that if k of n grows as big O of n over log n, then f of g of k of n grows on the exponential order of two to the n. And g of k of n is quite sparse, its maximum degree is big O of log n when k of n is big O of n over log n, and is currently the sparsest class of balanced bipartite graphs we know of for which f grows on the order of 2 to the n. We now shift our focus slightly to examining the matching graph on n vertices. As an example, here we've shown the graph m of 6, and there are a few reasons why we examine families of pairwise matching different permutations. For one, the matching graph is a subgraph of the path and of many other graphs, so f of the matching graph is a lower bound on f of the path and on f of many other graphs. Additionally, the matching graph has a very specific structure as it consists of the union of n over 2 disjoint subgraphs. In order to exploit this structure of the matching graph, we define f sub b of g to be the maximum size of a family of pairwise g different permutations of the vertices of g with an additional b blank spaces. To illustrate this concept of blank spaces, here we've shown the graph m of 2. And below, we have a family of three pairwise m of two different permutations of the vertices of m of two with an additional one blank space. So this blank space is represented by an asterisk in each permutation and essentially serves as a placeholder within the permutations. So this family shows that f infinity of m of two, which is by definition at least f sub one of m of two, is at least three. And it is easy to verify that equality holds in both of these cases. So one would expect that for many graphs g, f infinity of g would be much greater than f of g, and that as the number of vertices in the graph grows, f infinity would grow exponentially much faster than f. However, in this theorem, we show that for many graphs g of n, f infinity and f actually yield equivalent exponential growths. And specifically, the asymptotic growths of f of m of n and of f infinity of m of n are equivalent, or f of m of n grows in the same exponential order as f infinity of m of n. So because of this result, we investigate f infinity of m of n, first because it's related to f of m of n and has equivalent asymptotic growth by this theorem. But additionally, the problem of determining f infinity turns out to be intrinsically interesting and difficult. And it can be difficult to determine f infinity of g for even some very small and simple graphs g. The only previously known result relating to the value of f infinity of m of n was shown by Corner, Malvenuto, and Simoni in 2008. And they showed that f infinity of m of n lies between root 3 to the n and 2 to the n, where n is assumed to be an even positive integer. We show a couple of results relating to the value of f infinity of m of n. We first show that f infinity of m of 4 is equal to 9. And then we combine this result with a few of our lemmas that are not shown here to show that f infinity of m of n is strictly less than 9 times 2 to the n minus 4. So the second theorem improves the existing upper bound on f infinity of m of n by a constant factor of 9 sixteenths. But both of these results were shown through novel methods for bounding f infinity that we develop. In summary, in this project, we prove a number of uh, bounds relating to the maximum size of a family of pairwise graph different permutations. And in this talk, we've outlined a few of our major results. Our results determine the exact and asymptotic growth of f to be near or equal to n choose the floor of n over 2 for large classes of balanced bipartite graphs. 
We present examples of particularly sparse classes of balanced bipartite graphs for which the same growth holds for f. We give new bounds uh, on the value of f infinity of m of n using novel methods. And our results relate to the concept of the Shan capacity of a graph. In the future, we plan to show that f grows in the order of 2 to the n for additional sparse classes of balanced bipartite graphs. And we plan to extend our new methods for bounding f infinity of m of n. We would like to thank our mentor, Chion Kim, for his help with our project, as well as Dr. Tanya Kavanova, the MIT Primes Program, the Siemens Foundation, Discovery Education, George Washington University, our school principal, Ms. Lassa, our school proctor, Mrs. Haupt, and our families. Here are references. Thank you.